in terms of my personal feelings because I can hear the volume reduce. I imagine it's around 30-35% improvement over the, um, the three month period after I, after I had the first lot of treatments. My, my knees already feel better after, um, you know, it's only been two, three days since all the localised injections on top of everything else and the, you know, the oxygen chambers and whatever else. So you know, I do feel like already my knees have had significant improvement. Like it doesn't hurt when I'm walking now. I walked down the stairs earlier, it's like, oh wow, I can walk down the stairs again without it hurting. So you know, those things are, are really nice to, to have that quality of life back again. Can you please introduce yourself? Uh, what's your name, where you're from and what brought you to the clinic? Okay, so my name is Rick Beardsell. Um, I'm from England, um, Cheshire, near Manchester. And um, in short, I had cancer in 2019, 2020, and had a lot of chemotherapy. Um, it was quite an aggressive cancer. And because of that, um, I had extensive chemotherapy. And the chemotherapy not only gave me tinnitus, but damaged a lot of my ligaments and tendons. So for example, my hamstring came off, I had to have knee surgery, both my knees were painful, my Achilles tendons and so on. So. Um, I did extensive research and from the research I was able to find um, Swiss Medica with, uh, with a hope after I'd run out of all hope to uh, see if they could do anything for me. Can you please describe me a little bit more about challenges and symptoms you were faced daily? How... Okay, so my main issues over the, over, you know, since I finished uh, my treatments since I've been in remission is my tinnitus. At first it was so loud, it was like a car alarm going off in my head. 24 hours a day is just relentless. Um, I thought I would rather be deaf than, than have this problem. Um, it did subside a little bit, um, but then it was just it was just very loud, like tss, this sort of level of noise. So it's quite difficult in a, in a crowded room or a busy room to try and listen and hear other people over the sound. Um, and then secondly, as a high level athlete, I was, um, doing a lot of sprinting and as I mentioned my hamstring came off and then my knees were very painful I really struggled recently just getting down the stairs and things so I had to try and change my training um, in accordance to this. What treatments or interventions had you previously tried to address these challenges? Well I'd, I'd done lots of research for tinnitus and there just seems to be nothing out there it's more therapy in terms of try and get your mind to not listen to the sound rather than an actual cure for it and just I had them I tried hearing aids and various other things um, <clears throat> and this is the this is the second time I've actually been here the first time um, I did notice it wasn't quantifiable in terms of data but in terms of my personal feelings because because I can hear the volume reduce I imagine it's around 30 35 percent improvement over the the um, three month period after I, after I had the first lot of treatments. When was your first time? I think it was around 18, 18 months ago or something like this. And when uh, have you noticed first improvement? Um, so you said that was, that, that was the, main, the main improvement for me and my knees felt a lot better. Um, since then, um, as I mentioned, I did have um, ongoing issues. I, I knew my knees were bad. Um, so I carried on trying to train through it and my knees were just too bad so I needed uh, my, my meniscus trimming because that, that had split or was problematic. Um, <clears throat> so I had, had this along with several other procedures and then I actually went on and, and performed at the Indoor World Championships in March 2023 which is recently gone and um, came second in the world then and then I was preparing for the Outdoor Championships and then as I was up in my training trying to um, you know, getting the extra five, ten percent here and there. Um, my knees just got worse and worse. Um, Started to really back off, and that was when I thought, right, I need to go to Swiss Medica again. And what have you heard or seen about uh, stem cells that you decided decided to try? Well, there's lots. There's lots in the in the media, in the press about how good stem cell treatment is, um, and, and obviously having had it before, I, w I was very aware of it. So, so for me, you know, it, it's, it's a regeneration process at a cellular level and I, I didn't want another operation on my knees and um, I know the period of time it can take to do that and this is prior to, you know, having to have an operation thing. If I can have some stem cell treatment then, yeah, great, let's do it.
And what were your main concerns or doubts about stem cell therapy before you came for the first time? Well, I think the main difficulty is there's, there's no guarantees. Obviously, everybody's different. Everyone reacts differently to it. So I understand that. And obviously, there's a financial implication to it. And um, so you weigh it all up. And then for me, my health is my most important thing. Without my health, I have nothing. So I may as well have a go. Mm -hmm. And did you discuss the, the idea of stem cell treatment with your primary doctor or specialist? Yeah, I, I, I discussed it and um, yeah, we, we went through it, whether it be my own one. So the first time I was here, I had the, my bone marrow taken out of my back. So that's been used again since because they extract the stem cells from there. And then I also used donor cells, so I used a combination this time to hopefully heighten the the results. Did you have any some kind of concerns about Serbia to go to a known country, to a known clinic? Yeah, it was like the first time I was here was was um, post or the back end of COVID, and um, so I'm, I'm going to a fairly unknown country that's very close to Russia, <laughs> and you think oh, it's going to be a bit dodgy at this, and then um, you know, got picked up at the airport by the head of security who was massive with his club hands and I was like oh no he took me to the hotel and everything was fine um but it's you know you go into into the clinic you know obviously I'm a grown a grown man now and I've got a lot of life experience but you go into a, a clinic and then they're extracting extracting this bone marrow from you and it's like how how did these steps get me to this point in my life is is a bit a bit strange but you know ultimately I was very pleased that I did it and it was like I said this the success I had last time is what brought me back this time. And could you share your experience at Swiss Medica? Did you feel the procedures were, were safe and what outcomes are you hoping for post-post post, post treatment? Yeah, now? I mean, all, all this, I mean, I was, I was very impressed with the treatments. I think feel it's even evolved from the first time. So I had, an, I had the MRI scan, which was, which I thought was great because that enabled my knees to have um, actual data that the, um, the doctors and the, um, the medical staff can work with when they were doing the localized injections um you know it was very thorough so they even had like an x-ray machine so as they're putting the needle there they made sure that this the stem cells were being injected in exactly the right place which is you know that that technology was, was brilliant they were, they were doing that and they actually care it seems and uh, you know they're working out this plan that's um directed just for you so it's it's a very targeted very um organized way of treating it and um, I, thought it, I thought you know the whole the whole process was fabulous out of all the options available why did you choose this medica for a treatment well they're the, they're the main ones that i found in the first instance i think you can go and get it done in mexico or some other random places but i felt this was the safest place especially after i've already been here before so i knew i knew some of the staff again so you know i felt it was safe but this time i was not not even anxious i just knew the process um, and like I say, I've been, been very content here. Uh, for those facing similar health challenges, uh, what advice or insight would you like to share? Well, I think those that do suffer from tinnitus um, will recognise how life um, problematic it can be and habilitating it can be. And, um, you know, I think it is worth giving it a try. Obviously, as you mentioned, there's no guaranteed results that they can do, but even for me, even if I could get the first time, even if I could get 5% better, I'll take it because it was so, you know, bad for me. Um, and then I'm hoping if I can get another 20, 30% better again now, it would, would be brilliant. Because now, like, since I had it done the first place, it probably got 5% worse, but I've been using um, quite loud machinery and construction tools, doing some DIY things over the last year or so. Um, so I've now bought ear defenders and protecting my ears a lot more. Um, but if I can get another 20, 30 percent better, you know, similar to last time, then I'll be very happy with that. And it makes the conversations in um, in a group environment much better. I think initially, because you can't hear and you've got, you're trying to listen over the sound, you you end up withdrawing yourself from the conversation, and then you end up being more isolated. So rather than going down this route then you know, you've got the opportunity to do something about it.